Mupangara, which means the tassel on the chief's headdress, named after the beautiful two-colored uh, purple and yellow flowers that are very distinctive on this tree. Interestingly, that's also reflected in the Latin name Dicrostachys cinerea. Dicrostachys means two-colored spike. In English, we call it the Chinese lantern. That's the name after the sort of little nodding spiky flowers. Or it's called the sickle bush. And the sickle bush comes from these twisted up pods. This tree looks just like uh, an acacia. You'd be absolutely certain it was an acacia until you came up close to it and you realize that even though it does have uh, these distinctive acacia-like compound leaves. There's no thorns on them at all. It's completely unarmed. Unmistakable also with this bark, this deeply striated crisscross pattern of the bark. Can't be anything else. Uh, the pods also look like they're an acacia, but this is in the uh, mimosoid family, Phobaceae, uh, so it is closely related, but it is absolutely not an acacia and is totally unarmed. How's it guys? My name is Gus the African Plant Hunter. This is another episode in my ongoing series on medicinal plants of Southern Africa. This tree here, which never grows very big, uh, but is quite common, often grows in quite thick groves, is found across Africa and also into India. Wherever it's found, it has medicinal uses. Uh, so there is clearly something special about this tree and that's why I've chosen to focus on it today. So it is mostly the bark, the root bark and the stem bark that's used in traditional medicine, but not exclusively. The leaves are, if you're in Namibia, for example, uh, and you've got a running tummy uh, to chew some of these leaves, which are very bitter, I warn you, um, but they are said to cure diarrhea. Uh, the pods too are in some parts of Africa, they are used as a topical wound treatment. You take one of these sort of rolled up, scrunched up rolls of pods, uh, you burn them and then you take the ash and then you apply the ash uh, topically to the wound and that is uh, said to aid healing in the wounds. But it is the root and the root bark and the stem bark that's mostly used. So what are the uses of that? Well, they're many and varied. Uh, from syphilis, uh, tuberculosis, elephantiasis, um, backache, body pain, uh, even leprosy are uh, all treated through uh, infusions of the root. So an infusion is basically a tea where you add uh, hot water to the plant material and then uh, you sieve out the, the material and you apply the liquid. Uh, that's an infusion. So that's how the root infusion is used. And uh, then the other uh, form of use is what they call a decoction, where you take some other solvent, uh, usually a sort of ethanol, uh, ethanolic solvent, and, and you make a liquid. And the root decoctions, uh, or decoctions from uh, the root bark or the tree bark, are used uh, internally to treat a sore throat, uh, kind of gargling in it, um, and also swallowed to treat infertility. I'm going to talk about the particular uses in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, this plant has some very kind of magical uses. So one of the best known is to treat quite a common ailment called Chitsinga. Now, Chitsinga is caused by witchcraft. Chitsinga is basically when through witchcraft, uh, usually an alien object is passed somewhere into the victim's body. And then from there, pain emanates and it can cause all sorts of problems and uh, complications. So the way that Chitsinga is treated by a traditional healer is an incision called the Nyora is made uh, just above the site of the pain and then uh, a root decoction is uh, poured onto that and uh, that is said to um, evict uh, the witchcraft and lead to uh, complete recovery of the victim. Another common sort of magical problem that is treated with uh, Mupangara is the depressed fontanel chepamsoro, uh, which is a uh, another 
witchcraft induced affliction uh, that affects babies. And again, what happens is a topical application. Um, this time it's usually of a dried powder uh, made from the root bark that is applied to that. It is also believed that if you take little bits of the actual root and tie them around your waist with a belt and tassels hanging from them, if you're a female, they will prevent conception. Uh, that's also quite a widespread view. So those are the traditional uses. What does modern pharmacology say? Well, there are two uh, really interesting compounds in here. The first one is called mescitol. Mescitol has a demonstrated um, free radical scavenging abilities. So free radical scavenging, basically antioxidant, uh, very useful in uh, many regards. Uh, of course, uh, many of you have chased after elusive uh, antioxidants. I like to get mine from red wine, but uh, it comes from all sorts of plant materials. The other notable uh, fact about mescitol is that it is an alpha-glucosidase inhibitor, which means it is very useful in uh, reducing your blood sugar levels. So this is something that... Uh, I'm saying mescitol. I've never heard of it actually with this plant, um, but the compound that is found in this plant has scientifically been demonstrated to be able to reduce your blood sugar levels. Very useful, of course, for diabetics. The other compound that is found in here is an ester that is a, a xanthine oxidase inhibitor, which is really useful in both the prevention and the treatment of gout. Interestingly, the pharmacological properties of this tree don't relate to the traditional medicinal uses, which is, yeah, that's kind of unusual. But then this plant is not, to my knowledge, used at all in any way in modern medicine, even though it has a wide range of traditional uses, which suggests to me that there's a lot of research still to be done on this tree. And goodness knows it's widespread enough. You can find this all over the bush in Southern Africa. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Lots more. Just check out African Plant Hunter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, you'll see me there and, of course, on YouTube. All right, I will check you later. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.